Hi, I'm Faith Serby with Delaware Riverkeeper Network. Welcome to the Delaware Riverkeeper Network Stream Monitor Training Series to help train volunteer monitors to collect important data to monitor and protect streams from the harms of industrial shale gas drilling and other pollution threats. This video series accompanies Delaware Riverkeeper Network's written protocols and manual. We will take you through various monitoring techniques to document and track the health of the streams you watchdog in your community. Delaware Riverkeeper Network's trained volunteer monitors throughout our river community are the eyes and ears for the watershed, and we depend on the help of our monitor teams to provide us with important data so we can hold polluters accountable and document stream conditions, good or bad. Thank you for lending a hand to monitor your local streams. You're going to take your vial and the chloride test kit and fill it to the 15 mil line, first rinsing it out three times to ensure you just have the sample water itself. Be sure to rinse the cap as well. Dump out the sample to the 15 mil line, making sure the meniscus is at the white line and add one drop of the phenolphthalein solution. Holding the bottle vertical. If the phenolphthalein solution keeps the sample colorless, you skip to step four. You add three drops of the chloride reagent number one. and the sample should turn yellow. Put on the cap, being careful not to spill the sample, and mix. You're now ready to get the titrator prepared to do the direct read titration for the chloride kit. For the titrator, you're going to use chloride reagent number two. Fill the titrator to the zero mark. Making sure there are no air bubbles in the titrator. This is very important so that you get an accurate reading. The flattest and widest part of the titrator should be at the zero mark. Put the titrator in the sleeve, cap your titration solution so that it stays fresh for next time. You're now ready to titrate the sample. To do this, you'll insert the titrator tube into the cap hole and add drops at a time and swirl and mix. It's really important that you swirl every time you titrate to ensure that you don't over titrate the sample. What you're looking for is a color change of yellow to a brown orange that's consistent throughout the sample. Sometimes a white background can help determine the color change as well. And there we have the color change. After the titration and the color change, you're going to do a direct read on the titrator You'll see here that the result is 40 parts per million of chloride. Record that measurement on the data sheet. Be sure to record your data results on the Delaware Riverkeeper Network data sheet. Also be sure that you do a second reading and a second replicate and average the two readings together. This is a quality assurance quality control step and ensures that our data is rigorous. If you suspect a pollution event when you're out stream sampling, for example, if the conductivity reading is three times greater than what it normally is on the typical type of weather that you've been sampling, you want to grab a sample just to be certain and put that sample on ice. Again, we reviewed how to take a sample from the stream. And if you do that, be sure you also wear gloves if there is a pollution concern so that you keep yourself out of harm's way as well as waders. On the stream bottle itself, you want to put your name, the stream location, and the stream code, as well as the date and the time the sample was taken. Put that into 
a cooler that's on ice, and then call the Delaware Riverkeeper Network hotline number and the proper agencies that are outlined in the protocol.